Hey everyone and welcome back. This is Meta CTF. They hosted a Flash CTF. Uh, it was five challenges and the competition lasts three hours. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna be covering the five challenges. Uh, they should be timestamped below. Uh, with that, let's get started. The first challenge is direct login. It was a web challenge and we're given a URL. Uh, if we go to the URL, we'll see a little login page. We can right click view page source. Uh, if we scroll down, there's some JavaScript down here with a function called login. Uh, it's going to make a request to login.php with our username and password. And if we log in successfully, it's going to redirect us to employeeportal.php. Um, so we can try manually going to employeeportal.php, uh, employee uh, and we can see it works. And the flag is here. Meta CTF inspector is going to inspect. The next challenge is obfuscated secrets. Um, we're given a Python script, and it'll tell us if we have the correct flag or not. So this is the script, uh, the meta CTF flag checker. Uh, it's going to ask us for a flag. It defines a validate flag function. Uh, and if we pass the validate flag function, we know that the flag is correct. So in this validate flag function, they're going to create some encrypted string. They're going to check to see if our inputted flag has the same length as this uh, encrypted string. And then they're going to do this uh, comparison check to see if the, the flag actually matches. Um, it looks kind of nasty, but if you just kind of sit down and think about it, um, it's really not too bad. Uh, basically what's happening is it's kind of like a rotation or a Caesar cipher uh, where every character is rotated by a certain uh, number. But this one, the rotation is different and it's like incremental. Um, so we know that the front of the flag starts with meta uh, and it's capital like this. Um, so we can see the difference between L and M is one and the difference between C and E is C, D, E, so two. And the difference between Q and T is R, S, T, so three. Uh, and then this would be four and five. So to decrypt this, we just need to write a little program that'll just add one to this letter, two to this letter, three to this letter, four to this letter, and we should get out the flag. Um, so to do that, I wrote a little self script. I take out that encrypted string. And then for each character in the encrypted string, like I said, I'm just gonna add um, you know, that offset. And uh, yeah, we should just be able to print out the flag once we're done. Uh, so let's run it. Let's make this much bigger. Python three. Solve.py, and we get the flag. Meta CTF flag in reverse is galf. The next challenge is simple sums. We're given a C file and a netcat port. Um, so the idea behind this challenge is uh, we're going to give the program two numbers, uh, A and B, and they both have to be positive numbers. And somehow if they sum up to minus one through three seven, uh, we get the flag. Um, at first glance, this seems impossible, but uh, it's very well known that um, you can have a integer overflow um, so integers only have a set size and they have to represent, if they're signed, they have to be able to represent both positive and negative. And so what happens is if you have an integer and you keep adding to it, eventually it's actually going to wrap around and start uh, being a negative number uh, as long as you cast it as a uh, signed integer. Um, and so basically we just need to calculate where that actually happens. Um, so uh, we can do a little bit of math. Um, so two to the 32 is the maximum integer that can be represented. Um, negative numbers start around half of that. So two to the 31, somewhere around here. Um, I'm off by a couple, but you know, it's ballpark over there. Um, so what we could do is take the max int, which is the largest number that they allow us to put it in and then calculate uh, what number would give us minus one through three, seven if we added them together. Um, so the way I did that was two to the 31 minus this and we want minus one through three, seven. Um, so I just guess that this is probably the number that we want. So this is the first number and this is the second number. Um, and we can try them out. Uh, let's go here, I think I saved it, yeah. Uh, I was being a little bit weird. So we're entering our first positive number, our second positive number, and the sum is still a positive number if you choose to cast it as a uh, unsigned number. But if you view it as a unsigned, or sorry, a signed number, then it does equal minus one through three seven, and we get the flag. Meta CTF counting beyond infinity. The next challenge is SHA-256 Collider. Uh, we're given a Python file and a netcat port. Um, so if we look at the server code, what's gonna happen is um, they're going to define a generator three. They're going to create a prime P which is 124 bits. And then they're gonna pick some random secret that's you know roughly 124 bits long. Uh, and then they're gonna give us those values, which is a little bit strange. Uh, and then we have to give it back a secret and that secret cannot be equal to the secret they gave us. Um, but basically we need those, given this new secret, it has to be equal to the previous uh, calculation here, I guess. Then they're gonna take the, the SHAs of those two values. And if the SHAs match, uh, we get the flag. Um, Basically what it means is we need these two values to be equal 
And the thing we control is this, this user secret, and we know everything else. We know what G is, G in this case is three. Uh, secret was given to us and P was given to us. Um, so somehow we need to calculate a user secret that somehow you know makes these equal. Um, to do this, so, and it's just me G to the uh, secret mod P. Um, to do this, I use Fermat's little theorem. Uh, it's just a little bit of math. Um, I guess I'll, I'll do it down here. Uh, but what's gonna happen is we're gonna use Fermat's little theorem, which just says A to the P minus one is equal to one mod P. Um, in this case, we get flexibility with choosing A. I think there are con con constraints with P, like maybe they have to have like no shared primes or something like that, but uh, we get to pick. So I'm gonna pick A to be G. And so we know what G is, we know what P and P is. Um, so this is a statement all by itself. Uh, there's also uh, G to the secret is equal to the shared secret. Is that what they called it? Shared, I guess. Uh, is equal to shared uh, mod P. All right. So uh, the terminology here, like I said, we have G. G is equal to three. P is equal to the prime. They give us the prime. Uh, they give us shared. Shared is that like ciphertext um, that they give us. Uh, and they also give us S. Actually, they don't give us shared, but we can calculate shared very easily because we have S. Um, and so we need to find another S uh, such that it is also equal to shared. Um, and to do this, uh, one time shared, we can multiply these two statements together. Uh, one time shared is just shared, and that's what we want. So if we multiply them, we get G to the P minus one times, oops, uh, G to the S is equal to shared mod P. Cool. Um, so we have a value that is equal, and we just need to merge these together. Uh, to do that, we just add them. So it's G to the P. Well, autocomplete is being very annoying, but uh, shared mod P. Um, so our answer, instead of returning just shared, which we're not allowed to do, we're going to do shared plus P minus one. Um, and this will give us the same value. So we get out the same hashes, uh, but obviously it is a different value. Um, it is not just equal to S. Um, oops. The solve script that I wrote for this is, so we're just gonna connect to the remote host. We're gonna wait for P, we're gonna grab P, we're gonna wait for the secret, we're gonna grab the secret. We don't grab G, because G is always three. It's gonna ask us for our secret. And so then I'm just gonna return the secret, but I'm gonna add a P minus one, um, because of Fermat's little theorem, we know that it'll return the same value when it does that hashing stuff. Uh, and then I'll spawn an interactive. And so we can run it, uh, make it nice and big. Python three, solve.py, oops. And we get it. Well done. Uh, you are the first. Here is your flag. Meta CTF, well done. You broke shot 256. The last challenge is license to scan. Um, in this challenge, they're going to give us a packet capture and a description of some protocol. Uh, this protocol um, involves the license plates of cars. Um, and so we just need to decode this protocol. And somewhere in there is the flag. Uh, so first thing we can do is open up the packet capture. Um, I have a filter on. Uh, but here's the packet capture. It's very small. Uh, there's some UDP and some ARP. We don't care about the ARP, so I just filter that out. Uh, so we have this UDP protocol. We can see we have a couple of small packets, and then the packets get a little bit larger, um, and then another small one. Um, so if you read through the protocol, it's really not too bad. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is there's a client and a server. Uh, they're both going to start a communication, and when they do that, they both send some secret key, which is 10 bytes long, uh, and it's in this like data portion of the packet. Um, after that, all, they start sending fields, which are just like the license plates. And the license plates are uh, encrypted with those two nonces. And all the encryption is just XOR. Um, so if you take the two initial keys from the sender and the receiver, and you XOR it with each of the license plates, um, you should get a bunch of plain text. And it would make sense that the flag is in there and the flag is in there. Um, to see what the solution looks like, uh, this is what I used. I used PyShark for stuff like this. Um, so I open up the packet capture in PyShark. Uh, plates.pcap. Um, I filter out all those ARP packets. Um, we're not doing address resolution, so we don't care about it. Um, I don't think I need out. So N1 is the first key. N2 is the second key. Key is just them XOR together. Um, I just save those as global variables. So for this is kind of messy code, uh, just CTF code. So for all of the packets in the packet capture, uh, grab out the data. Um, we don't care about all the UDP stuff. Um, we only care about the data. Uh, the protocol says that the version and type is in the first byte, so I just print it out just in case. Uh, then it says the length of the packet is in the second byte, second and third byte. Um, so I take that, I, I use Pwn Tools, which is a popular library for doing binary exploitation, but just has some unpacking. You could use Python struct, I just know Pwn Tools better. Um, so I unpack the, those values to see what the length is. Again, I'll, I'm just going through the protocol, I don't even think you need either of those things. Um, 
And then, uh, so from reading the spec, you learn that the first and second message, uh, they both have a length 10, and so therefore they are the two keys. So we need to grab those. So if I'm in the first packet, grab out the key. If I'm in the second packet, grab out the key, and then calculate the final key, just XOR them together. Uh, if I'm not in the first or second packet, it is a packet that has uh, uh, the license plates. Um, like I said, the license plates are also encrypted, um, but you can go through, I think each license plate, there's going to be multiple license plates, and each one is like 16 bytes. So I'm just going to iterate through all of them. So for i in range from 0 to the end of the data, uh, jump by 16, I print out the index. Uh, the license plate information starts at byte offset 4, uh, and you get this just from reading this. So for each uh, license plate, uh, there's a time field, a state field, and then the plate. Um, so the plate starts at byte 4. Um, so I just grab that out. So it's data plus 3 because of the offset plus to the plate index plus 3 to the plate index plus 16. Um, so I grab out that plate and then uh, I XOR it with that key we calculated earlier and I print it out. Um, and yeah, uh, the flag was in there. So Python 3 solve.py. Uh, we can go through. There's a bunch of crap, but if you just search meta, that would already popped up, but uh, you can see the flag there. Meta CTF uh, bracket dr, so driver test. Um, so fun. And that is all the challenges. So thanks to MetaCTF for hosting, and I will see you at the next CTF. Cheers.